Welcome back to Unlocked and part four of Prison Diaries. Whew. If you listened to last week, what a freaking roller coaster. What a huge just bundle of emotion all of that was. I don't know if I love or hate the fact that I haven't read the letters before coming on here and reading them. Part of me hates it because I was not emotionally prepared for that. Part of me loves it because it's real raw. And I don't know if you guys remember, but the first episode of the podcast, I don't know what's making me think of this right now, but the first episode of the podcast ever, Aaron kind of like called me out and was like, hey, like this isn't going to be successful if you have that filter that you're used to having for TV. For 10 years, I basically was on a comedy show and I had to show up happy and excited and was full of laughter, even if my world was absolutely falling apart. And Aaron was just like, hey, like, if you're just gonna put a smile on your face and, you know, act like everything's great, then I don't know how long this is going to last. And it took a long time for me to kind of slowly chisel away at that automatic filter that I had on myself. So part of me is really proud of the fact that I can show up and have emotion. (laughs) If I'm being real, because ever since I was a kid, I was just so good at hiding my emotions and just performing, putting on a show. You need me to show up. You need me to laugh. You need me to act a certain way. I gotcha. And that's really no way to be because you cheat not only others, but like you cheat yourself out of real raw emotions and feelings and actually working through that process of grief, love, laughter, Every emotion has a process. And when you're constantly faking your emotions, there's no way to see that process through. So I'm kind of happy that I've waited to read these just because I'm forced to feel the emotions. Our next letter starts on November 23rd, 2023, day 311. Thanksgiving Day. Thank you, Lord, for so many blessings. Yes, I'm sitting in prison, but I still have so much to be thankful for. First and foremost, my personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not sure how someone survives prison without it, and I'm so glad I won't ever know. My family is healthy and doing okay. I'm so grateful for each and every one of them. Well, I decided to cook for Thanksgiving. I fought against it, but I decided to do it. <laughs> this, there was about 10 of us who ate together. I made chicken and stuffing casseroles. Y'all, I don't even know how she, oh God. <laughs> I made chicken and stuffing casseroles. There was chips and dip. Several ladies made dessert. It doesn't sound like much, but cooking anything in here is a chore. Let me just explain. Cooking is done on radiators in the winter and with hot water and a small rubber made and a small rubber made orange cooler in the summer. There's no refrigerator, no knives, of course, <laughs> no staples other than a few spices from commissary. We made the best of it though, and just sitting around a table was nice. There really are some great women in here. We are all so different. However, prison unites you in a way. I made it through another holiday. Christmas is next, and I'm not looking forward to it. That letter. I think the most touching thing about the whole thing was the first paragraph. And I just want to read it again because it's Thanksgiving Day a holiday. I mean, you expect her to be down in the dumps. I would be, I would be friggin' miserable. But Thanksgiving Day, 
Thank you, Lord, for so many blessings. Yes, I'm sitting in prison, but I still have so much to be thankful for. Like, wow. Um, I have so much to be thankful for. First and foremost, my personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you guys remember, right before mom and dad left, and maybe we can like put a clip, like a little cut out, that episode of where mom and I did an episode together and I talked about being so angry at God. This is not the end of the road for me and for our family. Nope. And that my story at some point, I hope and pray will help someone else at their lowest. Mm -hmm. Like I was so angry, but she was just like, this God never, she, she just had such a peace about her. And I was so angry because I knew I was about to lose them to the system. And she was trying to help me through my anger with God. And even her sitting in prison 14 months later, she's sitting there like, thank you, God. Thank you. Like, I have so many things to be thankful for. Thank you. And I think that just goes to that's just such a testament to her character and her heart and the leader that she's always been for me and my siblings and my dad. Like she's always through no matter what she has always found the silver lining, even through her breast cancer. I remember she had her double mastectomy. She had drains in and it was spring break time and she was hell bent on making sure we went to the beach for spring break because our lives weren't going to change because she had cancer. And it's just moments like that that it just goes to show the type of woman that she is. And heck, if I can be half the person she is, I will be content and happy and full of life. But that last letter was November 23rd. Now we are at December 16th, 2023, day 334. Christmas is in full swing. My favorite holiday is here and I'm not looking forward to the day. I swore that I would not allow this situation to change me for the worst, and yet here I am, dreading my favorite time of the year. I tried to always make sure Christmas was so special at our house. Savannah is doing a great job. Conti- Savannah is doing a great job continuing that, even though I know it isn't easy. She has the house all decorated, and she's shopping for the kids. The ladies try to make it as festive as they can, get as festive as they can. A few of the ladies have been here over five years, so they've been able to acclimate. (sighs) So they've been able to act or no, that's sorry. A few of these ladies have been here over five years, so they've been able to accumulate some items. There's a tree when you walk in the front door. There's one in the cafeteria, and then there's one on the second and third floors. Lord, some of them are pitiful. The ornaments are, (laughs) the ornaments are ones that have been made or found out of the trash, but at least it's a tree and some lights. There was a door decorating contest. Some people went all out. My bunkie and I didn't decorate our door, only added some crocheted bulbs that our friend made made for us. We both kind of felt the same way. We didn't want to decorate in here. We both miss our family so much. God, please give me the strength to get through the holidays. Help me to remember the reason for the season. Help me to appreciate all the blessings you've given to me. I know this is only for a season. You have promised you will you will never leave me or forsake me. Thank you for that. I think what's so hard about that is just remembering back around the holiday season. And one of the toughest things was, first off, I decorated everything. I mean, my house looked like just like elves came in and threw up everywhere, okay? Um, Because I love the holiday season. I get that from my mom. She made it 
so freaking special. And so even when I moved out on my own, like when I lived in my condo, I decorated everything. I just love the holidays. And part of me just wanted to do it to connect with her to because that's what we always did together. Like she and I made sure the holidays were a go. And so I decorated everything. Um, I wanted it to be special for the kids. I was just like a little worker bee. I just wanted everything to be perfect. And then when it came to Christmas gifts for the kids, the hardest part of the whole thing was me asking them like, all right, what do you want Santa to bring you? What, what do you want? And their answer was nothing. Um, what, first off, what 11 year old do you hear say nothing when you ask what they want Santa to bring them or that they want for Christmas? But I had, I think it caught me so off guard because it's easy at 11 and 17 to say, I want this, 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 and this. Like, I want everything. Um, It's so easy to just want. But to hear them say, oh, I don't want anything. I was like, what? What do you mean you don't want anything? And... I was working so hard to make it special. So I was like, what do you mean? Like, like you don't want anything? And they both were just sitting there and they looked at me. And I remember Grayson saying, what, what we want, we can't have. Like, I want mom and dad home, but I can't have that. So I don't want anything. And you could tell he and Chloe had talked about it. Um, and she's told me their rooms are right next to each other in the house. And it's been so good because they're both so strong and resilient, but I know there's so many nights to where they're having a bad night. They're sad and they go to each other's rooms. So they'll go to each other to talk or cry or whatever the feelings are that they're feeling. And I'm so happy that they have each other. But to have two kids tell you, hey, we don't want anything for Christmas. I was like, you know, they don't want anything because they can't have what they do want. And that was tough. Um, just because I could feel how much they were hurting and I didn't want them hurting, especially at Christmas, the most amazing time of the year. It's always been so magical. And I tried my best to make it as special as I possibly could for them. And the house was decorated. They had their own custom stockings. Like I did what I could. Um, It still didn't bring mom and dad back, but I feel like we did a pretty dang good job at enjoying each other and I think that's what was so special about this time was that we truly I don't I'm trying to find the best way to say it it's so easy around the holidays like around Christmas to get so wrapped up in gifts and things and you know the that to some people is the reason for the season. Um, a, I know for us as a big family, we have always been blessed and, you know, very privileged. Um, and we've never, we've always had gifts. Like that's always been our thing. We always want, and I know, especially like my dad and I, we show our love through gift giving. Like that's one of our, love languages is we love to give gifts and so through that it's easy to lose kind of what the meaning for the season is and this past Christmas it was obviously I got the kids gifts it was nowhere compared to like what my parents do by any means but it was also I was so proud of the kids and They were still just as excited as if they had a thousand gifts under the tree. But we spent 
some really good quality intentional time with each other and just loved on each other. I know, you know, it's been, it was fun because Robert and his three boys came in town and they, we just spent great quality time, like all of us. I mean, five kids and we went to Opryland. We took all the kids to do really fun stuff and we just got to enjoy people and relationships. And if this whole thing has taught the kids and I anything, it's like relationships are key. I cannot tell you enough friendships, relationships, the opportunity to grow closer with another human being is the most important thing because guess what when the money goes when the job goes when your life falls apart those people are the ones that you have those are the ones you have to cry to to laugh with to experience life with so even though christmas looked different it was it was still pretty dang good And we got to just spend quality time with us and friends, and it it was pretty good. This episode of Unlocked is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. To all my podcast listeners, whether you love true crime or comedies, celebrity interviews, news, or even motivational speakers, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue, right? And guess what? Now you can call the shots on your auto insurance too. Enter the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. The Name Your Price tool puts you in charge of your auto insurance by working just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you a variety of coverages that fit within your budget, giving you options. Now that's something you'll want to press play on. It's easy to start a quote and you'll be able to choose the best option for you fast. It's just one of the many ways you can save with Progressive Insurance. Quote today at Progressive.com to try the Name Your Price tool for yourself and join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, price and coverage match limited by state law. This episode of Unlocked is brought to you by BetterHelp. You guys know I've spoken about BetterHelp time and time and time again, and that's because I am a firm believer in their product. I mean, BetterHelp is absolutely amazing, and it's all online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you do is just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. I don't know about you, but 2024 has started off with quite a bang. And for me, being a single parent, single income household, trying to deal with finances, kids, my own personal mental health, it's all been a huge challenge. I am not going to lie. And that is where therapy and better help has come into play because I have started to realize that if I am not my best self possible, then how in the heck am I going to be able to operate? So that's where I turn to better help. Let's face it. You've got Valentine's coming around the corner. And if you don't have someone, that's okay. You can become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. You can visit betterhelp.com slash Savannah today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Savannah. If you followed me for a while, then you know my hair journey has been quite interesting from long hair, shaved head, bob, who the heck knows what my hair is going to look like tomorrow. (laughs) And that's because so long ago, I just had thinning hair. It was unhealthy. I was not loving on it. And then I started taking Nutrafol. And Nutrafol is absolutely amazing. I swear by it. I have talked about it for years, whether it's on my Instagram or now here on the podcast. The reason I speak about it is because it has changed my life. In case you don't know, Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Hair thinning will happen to approximately one in two women. So if you're among them, no, you're not alone. Thinning is normal, but it's not openly talked about and going through it can feel less 
lonely and frustrating. For me, the stress does a number on my hair. When I'm stressed and I'm not eating properly, I realize, well, duh, make sure you're taking your Nutrafol on a day-to-day basis. So I hope you guys will take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time only, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the code UNLOCKED. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code UNLOCKED. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code UNLOCKED. The next letter is December 26th, day 344. Christmas is over. Another holiday down. My parents came to visit. We shared my holiday lunch from the cafeteria. It was decent. It was nice to have them visit. As much as I miss the kids, I was adamant that they not visit me on Christmas Day. I do not want them to ever have that memory of sitting in a prison visitation room on Christmas. Savannah did a great job, and they seemed to have had a good day. Everyone was kind of scattered, and that made me sad. Traditions are so important to me, and when I get out of here, they will be even more important. Family is everything. Mm. That is so true. Um, Everyone was definitely scattered. Um... It's all been really tough because I, like the kids and I, like me, Chloe, and Grayson, it's just our little unit, you know, like the threes company, like, <laughs> like it's just us. Um, We do everything together. And I think what's tough for me is how mom and dad feel like, you know, They have that feeling that life is just continuing to move on without them. And in a way, I have that feeling with people in my life because it's like their life, they just continue on living their life without any. It's so hard because I'm trying to find the best way to say it because I want to preface it by saying I am not trying to play a victim role. I am not trying to have people feel bad for me. I, I'm still moving on with my life, but it's still so hard to see people around you or family members just like moving on with their life. Like they're still doing what they want to do. They're, you know, whatever comes their way. And I'm still sitting here like struggling to catch my breath, struggling to come up for air, whether it's through just, you know, financially with the kids trying to parent me in a relationship, me, you know, like me just with a relationship with myself. Like I do all I can. It feels like, like, all right, I can come up for air and then some, another blow hits. And so it feels like everyone else is just moving on with their life and I'm still in the same place. So it's kind of hard. She's right. Everyone was scattered. But it's like I do all I can to focus on the kids and myself. And that's about it. Also, actually, it's not because I am dealing with lawyers day in and day out, um, just trying to fight for my parents and to get them home. So that's that's pretty tough. Um, and the last letter that I have for mom, um, but she said she's sending more, but the last one for part four is December 31st, 2023, day 349, New Year's Eve. We've never been one to go out on New Year's Eve, but gosh, I miss cooking and laying in bed, watching the ball or note drop. I'm going to watch the New Year's Eve special in Nashville. I made it through 2023. Man, some days were difficult, but I did it. 
I thank God for Todd. He never fails when I'm having a bad day. It seems I always get an email and he always knows exactly what to say. I miss him so much that it hurts. I miss being able to talk to him. I miss everything about him. I pray God encourages him and gives him the strength to keep moving forward. Bring on 2024. Once again, I miss him so bad it hurts. <laughs> so for all the people that want to write articles or to say they're getting divorced or whatever it may be, not happening. 2024. Gosh, last year, 2023 was the toughest year of our life. The toughest between mom and dad leaving, losing Nick, all the ups and downs. It was probably, it no, not probably, it was the hardest year of my life. But I think reading these letters from mom it just makes me realize that like, all right, when I'm down, when I'm in the dumps, when I feel sorry for myself, <sighs> remember these letters and remember the strength that she's finding within herself and God to move forward. And her strength gives me strength. And I'm just, I hope 2024, I mean, I've been saying, all right, this is going to be the year. This is going to be the year. Well, 2024, you are three months in, and I need a little bit more from you, okay? I, I do. 2024, I need a little bit more from you. I am hoping that April 19th is the turnaround, the turnaround day. I'm hoping and praying that April 19th, is the start to a new beginning. April 19th, for those that have not been listening, or maybe you're a new listener, if you're a new listener, welcome to Unlocked with Savannah. I hope that there has been something within this episode that has inspired you, that has led you, whether it's to a relationship with Christ or to mend a broken relationship with a loved one, or to just... Be more intentional with yourself and give yourself the love and grace that you deserve. I just hope you took something from this episode. But April 19th is our appeal date. So that's when we get to go and argue in front of the 11th Circuit, which is in, we will be in Fulton County, Georgia at the Federal Courthouse. You can find the address to that online. I want to say it's like Richard Jones something um but it is a federal courthouse in fulton county and it will be an open courtroom so we have to be there at 8 8 30 in the morning and our case will be heard that day our lawyers get to argue in front of the 11th circuit in front of three different judges and those judges will decide our fate and i can't help but thank god for that opportunity because only six percent of cases get granted oral arguments that's that's not a lot. 6%. And we are part of that 6%. And so when they go, when our lawyers go and argue in front of the 11th Circuit, they're going to argue on the errors of the court and the unjust things that occurred, the government misconduct, the prosecutor's misconduct. I mean, insufficient evidence. It, The things that we have, I just... I just don't believe that God has brought us this far to drop us off. And I don't believe that with the evidence that we have, that we don't get a fair shake. Um, whether that's with the appeals court remanding things back to the trial judge or them just making a ruling overall. I just cannot ask you guys enough to just keep praying. I have so many strangers that come up to me that say, I just want to let you know we're praying for you. We're praying, we're praying, and there are never too many prayers. So I just want to thank you for the prayers. And if you guys want to show up April 19th, come on, come sit with us, come listen for yourself on what we are arguing, 
um you're welcome to and i look forward to meeting you there but hopefully 2024 that's going to be our turnaround day i'm speaking into existence i'm manifesting it april 19th 2024 will be the turnaround for the rest of the year so i just these letters first off y'all like mom's handwriting it just does something she has always had the best handwriting ever i love knowing that like she touched this she wrote this now i get to touch it like these letters i will keep for the rest of my life and i honestly can't wait to like show my kids like hey this is the type of grandmother that you have like this is who i strive every day to be like and this is just the type of woman that I want my sons to marry and I want my daughters to have mother-in-laws like my mom like she is the definition of a perfect woman and I say that I know people will be like oh you're biased whatever you can even ask my friends I know like one of my the broker of my real estate company Pamela who's also one of my best friends she even talks about times that like my mom was there for her when she really needed someone and i have so many friends that just talk about their interactions with my mom so it's just i'm grateful to have a woman that has just touched so many people's lives and i get to call her my mom so that's kind of a blessing but oh gosh what a day what a day i just I'm grateful for the letters. I'm also grateful for the recipes to make these recipes and we'll figure out a fun way to like post them on our social channels. But I just, I'm grateful. So I came into this part one was, or part three was really hard and really sad. But then of course my mom somehow manages to like turn the freaking day around with her last few letters. So for that, I'm grateful and i'm just gonna keep fighting i keep fighting for mom and dad to come home for justice for all the men and women within our system that are having to endure the abuse that they're enduring i know that god allowed this to happen to my family so that we could help others and i didn't know any better before this there was no way for me to make any change because i didn't know i had never been subjected to this i was it was just never something I paid attention to. And now that I'm paying attention to it, now that I know better, I do better. And long after mom and dad come home, I am still going to be fighting for this cause alongside some really awesome lawyers who have a love and passion for prison reform and making the lives of these men and women better and helping to rehabilitate them. So if I... Don't leave you with anything else. I will leave you with this. If there is something that you're passionate about, if there's something that maybe you've been tone deaf to and you want to learn more about, go out and educate yourself. Admit that you don't know. Like, take pride out of the equation. Take that need to know it all mentality out of the equation because there's no way for us to know it all. And the moment you allow yourself to be vulnerable and you allow yourself to ask questions, that's the moment that you start to see growth. And that's the moment that you could be the change that someone else needs in life. Like you could create such waves that it invokes crazy change um, amongst just a certain group of people or just the world in general. So go out, fight for what you believe in. And maybe next time I will have more letters from mom for us to read because they just, nothing showcases her better than these letters. So 
Thank you again for listening to Unlocked with Savannah. And if you're listening on your podcast apps, make sure that you have subscribed so you get notifications. But if you didn't know, we're also on YouTube. So you can go and watch the full video version of all of our episodes on YouTube. And our YouTube channel is Unlocked with Savannah.